Good evening. Last spring, I was lying on the grass with my seven-year-old nephew, Philip, and we were watching the night sky, when suddenly he asked me, Aunt, what is the origin of humans? Tough question, right? But fortunately, before I even started to think about the evolution or fertilization of an egg, he came up with another question. Auntie, what is that bright star? Oh, what a relief. I knew that one. <laughs> so I said, Philip, this is Spica. It is a beautiful giant star, which is about four times larger than our sun. It's something like giraffe compared to me. And like other stars, also this star somehow had to be born. And that is how I came to my favorite topic, star formation, and started to talk about this. To create a star, you need a few ingredients. It is like with a snowball. If you want to make a snowball, you need snow and your hands. In case of stars, you need interstellar matter, formed of hydrogen and helium, and gravity. The interstellar matter has to be in a special form, in a form of interstellar cloud, um, molecule Volke. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, just to imagine how big the interstellar cloud has to be, I will ask you for your assistance. Please, everyone, look at your neighbor immediately. Yes, don't, don't hesitate, yes, now we can meet each other. And stare into his or her eyes. Perfect, yes. <laughs> now imagine... We are just looking into each other's eyes, okay? <laughs> now imagine that the sun is as big as the pupil you are looking at. In that case, the interstellar cloud from which the sun was born would be as big as Austria. And there is one more important thing. Now, now you can look back at me, yes? <laughs> And there's one more important thing. The, the matter must, must be very, very cold. Imagine it would be the opposite, that the matter is very warm. In that case, all the individual particles would move there and back and never give gravity the chance to attract each other. It is like if I fill myself with Red Bull and start to run there and back, I would also never give chance anyone to, you know, attract me. So, just to recap, to create a star, you need very cold and dense matter. Once you have it, inside of the interstellar cloud, a new star is born, gathering more and more matter, contracting. What would happen to you if you put on a sweater, a jacket, a coat? You would heat up. Yes, you would heat up. And that's what's happening with stars. They are gaining more and more matter, contracting, heating up, until the temperature rises up so much in their centers that fusion reactions occur. At that moment, the stars stop contracting because it has its own internal source of energy, and we say the star is born. And finally, I can get to my own research. So as you can see on this handmade model, um, this is a star, and this is the cold matter from which the star was born. Once the star is born, and especially those biggest and brightest ones, the surrounding medium is heated up because of the radiation of the star. And because it's warmer, it starts to expand and collect the surrounding cold matter more and more until it forms a very dense envelope. And what is happening to very dense and cold matter? New stars are born, right? You remember? Yes, a bit? Okay. Okay, never mind. So, this is what we observe in the universe, that <laughs> on the edges of the bubbles, new stars are born. Additionally, these stars, usually in a few millions of years, they usually explode oof, a supernova <laughs> and add a more boost into this matter, which is more contracting, and the probability of star formation is higher. And that is what I observe. I observe these interstellar bubbles, the center parts, which are very hot, I uh, observe with radio telescopes, and the dusty and cold envelope, I observe with infrared telescopes. But why does this fascinate me so much? Because all of us, we were once a part of this process. I will ask you for your assistance one last time. Please, look at your body, look at your arms, 
or look at your neighbor, you know each other already, right? So the vast majority of atoms in our body originated in fusion reactions of the stars, and due to explosions of supernovae, these atoms could enrich the interstellar matter, which later formed new stars, and also our sun, and its planets, the Earth, and our bodies. So, if you happen to lie on the grass with your nephew and he asks you, what is the origin of humans? The answer is actually right above your hats. Thank you very much.